Hello there! In this video, I'll be explaining how I used Affinity Designer to illustrate this small mushroom scene. I drew this sketch in Krita, then imported the image to Affinity Designer. As part of my setup, I brought out my color palette and previous mushroom illustrations from the asset panel. Affinity's asset panel lets me organize a library of common graphics that I can reuse across documents. I have libraries for my textures, children's book assets, and my personal branding. I started by creating vector shapes with the pen tool and the other shape tools. It's all outlines for now, so I can get an overview of the shape intersections. To control the line widths and give them a tapered effect, I used the pressure graph in the strokes panel. By default, the graph shows this straight line. Clicking on the line creates a point that can be dragged higher or lower. Lower on the graph pinches your selected vector line. That's how I created smooth curved lines for the stems on the herb and the mushroom. The pressure graph becomes harder to manage for complicated strokes. I personally prefer Illustrator's more intuitive width tool over this. I took out some moss from the Assets panel. This asset has tight negative spaces, so too much of it could easily create a party of visual noise. But with care, these made easy and consistent background details. Like any vector program, coloring in Affinity Designer is as simple as assigning a fill color to each shape. For future proofing, I created a document palette in the swatches where I saved all the colors on this illustration. For each color used, I click this button to create a global color. Global color is useful for recoloring. Instead of selecting the assets then adjusting the color, I can double-click the global color from the swatches panel to adjust this color wheel. It recolors all the assets that use that swatch. I did that often for this illustration as I looked for unusual colors to make this scene more otherworldly. I switch on over to Affinity Designer's Pixel Persona, where the textures happen. There are two types of layers for the Pixel Persona. The first one I used here is the Mask Layer, which is a common tool in graphic editors. It's where I can erase or reveal areas of a layer in a non-destructive way. With a textured brush, I erase the bases of the mushrooms and rocks to look like they're sitting on the ground. The next type of layer is a pixel layer, which is a typical raster layer. Aside from clicking the Add Pixel Layer button, Affinity can automatically create a pixel layer as soon as you draw with the paintbrush tool. If you also notice the layer ordering, the pixel layer is nested under the vector layer. This is how Affinity Designer handles clipping masks. The brush sets I use are the Daub Black Box and the Frankentoon Texturizer sets. I'll link to their shop pages in the description. They're not sponsored links FYI. I was able to grab these sets as freebies for a limited time in the Affinity Store. The Frankentoon set in particular is a bunch of textured brushes. The set was designed for the brushes to be layered over each other for more unique texture combos. I textured the mushroom caps to look like sugar-sprinkled gumdrops. Too bad they're not for eating. A quick and non-destructive way for shading is to add a colored rectangle. Set that to multiply and fade it out with the transparency tool. 
so the tallest mushroom would look like it's blocking light from the shorter mushrooms. For the mossy rocks, I'm using another brush from the Frankentune set, which has a cloudy leafy texture. Some of the brushes in the Frankentune set produce colors that slightly vary from your selected color. Slight color variations add a bit of visual interest for the moss. For the last of the textures, I used a splatter brush for the ground to hint that it's pebbled. And I painted in some contact shadows made by the tall herbs and the purple grass which are supposed to be lichen. I dotted the ground with simple circles for dewdrops. These fill in some empty space without demanding too much attention. The mushroom stems needed some more depth to them, so I used gradients to shade the stems and mushroom caps. Just more subtle shading to push the tallest mushroom forward. This scene is pretty much done, now to frame it with a circle from the assets library. This circle already has leaves as a background, but I replaced those to match the ground level these mushrooms are on. I drew in the base of a tree trunk and some more plants. And that's it! I didn't get into too much details in this video, but comment below if you have any questions or need help using Affinity Designer. I'd be happy to share what I learned so far using this program. Give a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of that and my art in the future. Thank you for watching and bye!